Hi everybody, welcome to a new year, 2021. Uh, for many people it's been a tough year, many have suffered economically, many have suffered in their health, many have suffered bereavement over the course of this last year, and uh, I guess for many it's been a tough one. But there's a couple of things we do know. We do know that God was with us in that time, and even though circumstances may not have been that great, um, it's been okay because His presence has made all the difference. But the second thing we know is that there is a future. We have a year sitting ahead of us. And I'm really hoping that as a result of some of the devotional things that we speak about, especially in the foundation time of this year, that this will set a foundation for a fantastic year, no matter what happens. You see, our lives should not be dependent upon necessarily how we feel about the things that go on around us. Our lives are established as believers upon different things. We live in a different world, a different realm, and God is the one who determines what our lives should be and how they should turn out at the end of the day. But we're trusting Him. And so from Helene, myself, and the elders of the church, we just want to wish you all the, the very, very best for 2021. We began last uh, year, just in the last week, talking about this one thing, that one thing thing. And we defined it, the principle as simply being that one thing in every area of your life, there is one thing that if you do it, it will make a huge difference. It'll make some things easier to do and maybe even other things unnecessary to do if you just find that one thing thing. So we've looked at the priority of one thing. We've looked at the principle of one thing. We've looked at the practice of one thing. And if you're only joining us this year for our devotional series, I do suggest you just go back to last week's stuff and uh, just do a little bit of a catch up so you know where we're going. But today we're in a, a beautiful passage of scripture that gives us a one thing thing. And it's, uh, it's in Luke chapter 10. And it's a very well known story of Mary and Martha. And Jesus tells Martha about one thing that is necessary. Let's look at that one thing that is necessary. And we're probably going to take a little bit over a week to do that one thing that is necessary to you. But let me just read the story to you as we start. You find it in Luke chapter 10, and it goes from verse 38. Now as they went on their way, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went, on to, she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and distracted about many things. One thing, however, is necessary. Mary has chosen the good thing, which shall not be taken away from her. It's a, it's a great passage. One thing that is necessary. Now, there is a, sometimes there seems to become a, a spiritual dilemma or theological sort of dilemma in the church where you get two, two sections of a church, where you get the worshippers on the one hand and you get the workers on the other hand. And very often these two, two people pride themselves as to what they are. They know what camp they live in. And sadly, in many churches, it polarizes people. Oh, I'm a worshipper and I'm a, a worker. And uh, Jesus here is addressing the workers. And he's saying, be very careful. Somebody's got to do the work, but it's your attitude towards the work that really makes all of the difference. Now, we often think, as I look at people who have had church experience, and uh, many people think that church is about hard work, man. You, I've got to do this stuff. I've got to read. I've got to pray. I've got to go to meetings. I've got to do good deeds. I've got to do all these things. And they, they look at that as being, in essence, a very hard work thing to do. And they say, is that all? Is that all the Christian life is all about? And if you take work to an extreme in a church, now I'm not knocking it completely because somebody's got to paint the kitchen, somebody's got to cook the meals, but is that all there is to our Christian experience? Now, you obviously know the answer is no. And Jesus came and he so beautifully defined it where he says, I've come to give you life, not just normal life, not just hardworking life. I've come to give you abundant life. And the language there is the word Zoe, which means of a life of fullness, the life of complete wellness. That's the life 
that Jesus came to give. And he saw in Mary, as Mary took up that pose, sitting at Jesus' feet, listening and worshiping and, and just sucking in everything that he had to say. And Jesus said, she's found the better thing. She hasn't found the only thing, but she has found the better thing. So we look at this and we say, well, what part of work does it play in the Zoe life, this life of abundance that Jesus says he has to give, has given to us? Now, there's a whole lot more of this wellness of life that I believe that God would want for us to have. But if you have a look at Solomon, Solomon talks about different types of people striving after different things. He talks about some people who are just striving to survive. And they just want to get through the day. They just want to make sure that they have a meal on their table and they have a bed to sleep in and a roof over their head. And they're kind of in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, you become very defensive. You defend your territory because it's all you've got. But then there are others who move to another scale. And these are the ones who want to thrive in life. And I guess in a sense, there should be something of that in all of us. I don't want to just go through life, go through the motions of life. God has called us to thrive. But if you take thrive to an extreme, you end up with another thing called excess. And nobody's into excess. Well, Jesus is certainly not into excess. And so somewhere between survival and excess, we find this beautiful world of thriving, where enough is enough in every sense of the word. Enough money is enough money. Enough talent is enough talent. Enough time is enough time. And when we take that and use that incredibly well, we find ourselves in a situation where we begin to thrive. Now, Mary had gone to the, 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 the beautiful place of Jesus' feet and man, she was thriving. But Martha's emphasis had been simply on getting the work done. Now, as you look back over 2020, I bet there's been a lot of people working just to get the work done, churn it out, get it done. I've got deadlines, I've got responsibilities, I've got all that stuff. Well, at the outset of 2021, I'm inviting you just to take a moment and just to reflect and say, last year I was a worker. Man, I churned it out. I did the stuff. No one could know me. In the church I worked, at home I worked, in the work I worked. Well, that's good. There's something good about people with good work ethics. But there's a place that only worship can fill in your heart. And I hope that as we start the year and as we spend this next week just looking at what it means to be a worshiper, I'm hoping it's going to be the start for a good year for you. So join us tomorrow and we're going to have a look at these two beautiful personalities of Mary and Martha. And I hope it will set a great start for 2021. Thanks guys. Have a fantastic day.